Uh, I handle the India uh, SMB team, which is primarily the small and medium businesses. Uh, it's our advertising uh, uh, business that uh, Google does for India. And uh, over the next half an hour, I, I, I don't want to keep you away from lunch, so I'll try to wrap my session as quickly as possible. I'll try to walk you through a little bit of AdWords 101. Uh, after, this will be followed in the afternoon at 2 o'clock for those of you who are interested to, for a more detailed workshop on AdWords, which my colleagues will uh, conduct, in, uh, conduct from 2 o'clock or so. So make sure that all of you are there. So as a part of my running through so that all of you can have your lunch, I'll skip a few slides so uh, we can be early for lunch. Uh, once uh, it is set, then we can go. Yeah. So uh, I think in the morning, uh, Arijit spoke about how internet is fundamentally shaping. The number of users that are coming online is actually phenomenal. When I actually sit on this side and look at the number of people who are actually coming online, uh, as far as India, SMB, uh, small and medium businesses are concerned, uh, that's really, I need to press this one, the other one, right? Does this work? How do I do this? I think you need to do something with that. Yeah, it is. Okay. So let me try that. OK. So th this is where I want to start. Uh, what I want to walk you through today is, you know, uh, first of all, as all of, uh, as all of you know, if you're all in business, where does your business start? Anybody? Who is fundamental to your business? Customer, right? Let's talk about him first. Second, let's talk about what you can do to create magic movements for him. And then we'll talk about how Google can help you do that. And then I'll take some Q&A. First of all, your customer. Where is he today? Your customers are all online. And they are doing many things. I talked about the number of people online, and it's growing at a very rapid pace. It's one of the fastest growing in terms of uh, the internet markets. It's now the third largest, and soon will be one of the second largest, uh, or uh, even the first largest by 2015. And these are, again, the 300 odd million people who will buy anything that you're willing to sell. While India is a 1.2 billion population, the real purchasing power is with around about 200, 300 million people. And those are the first set movers who will come on online. And you will agree that that's a market that all of us want to tap, right? So those people are online. Second, we are in that connection business, right? Connecting. Let's look at your users today. Typical user, go searches a website, looks at a film star, go reads up some technical article, economics, and then he goes to Facebook, does something with it. This is, how, this is where your consumers are. How many of you do this? How many of you are familiar with what, what's happening here? All of you go to news sites? Raise your hands. Go check out Facebook in a day or two. Go check out Film Stars, some film review. Shaguni, do you know? I was just curious uh, when Jayanth was talking about Google Trends. I actually went and checked. Google Trends for Chennai. Somebody guess what's actually on the trends today? G days. Bad idea, no. That's a little bit self-serving. We, we, we look at users, not what we want to look at. So, yeah? Villa, right? In the last 30 days, the other thing that is getting searched is Na Iga. OK? Other thing which is very peculiar to Chennai that is getting a lot of hits is Tamil Nadu Public Service uh, Commission. I don't know how many of you are interested in that, but the huge amount of searches happening. So if you were actually an advertiser who is in service business in times of training, I would be there, right? That's one of the largest. If I actually go do it for India or Uttar Pradesh, for example, what is being searched are movies like Cocktail, Gangs of Vasepur. You know, it's similar behavior, but nobody is searching for Tamil Nadu Public Service Commission. They are searching for something else. Just as an example, right? Users are online and they're doing different things. Second, what is this resulting? Search, we have seen, has grown phenomenally in the last uh, five years. And this is actually trending 20x times. Now, that's unbelievable amount of growth. That's a function of two things, the number of users coming online, second, the amount of content available, and therefore, a lot of searches 
that are happening online. This is what your consumers are right now doing outside of this room. They are searching. Second, let's look at simply what does it mean when your consumer is out there and let's say he's typed something called business laptops. I don't know how many of you can see that. It says business laptops. What happens? That's a search query. That's what we call a search query. Somebody is looking for business laptops. Second, what Google does, it crawls the web and throws up all the natural listings which deal in anything which is related to business laptops uh, using, it, using its logarithm. Apart from it, right at the top, Google provides an opportunity to provide a couple of sponsored links which are primarily the advertisements related to that query called business laptops. Right? In addition to that, on the right hand side also, it provides some idea, it, it provides a few more sponsored links for advertisers to come online. This is very interesting, right? If you are normally uh, waking up today morning, reading the Hindu, you know, I could show you a business laptop ad, but maybe you are not looking for a business laptop ad today. You are possibly interested in going and buying something in Tnagar in a, 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 a sari, you know, for example, or some dress material, but you are not looking for business laptop. So when advertiser is trying to show you a business laptop, when you open the Hindu first thing front page, you will just skip it over. In this case, it's possible using Google to actually bring that power of search and connect. What else happens? On Google, some of us can be on google.com, but internationally, there are other, people, other search engines that people use, ask.com, aol.com. Even then, you know, the ads can still be there. All of you don't start your day, you know, go to google.com. It's not like your religion, you come early in the morning and start google.com. You may sometimes when you want to find out something, but you also know which is your favorite film website for film news. Do you all have one? Everybody has a particular site where they consume film news, right? Everybody goes to a particular uh, news site than other news sites. Somebody goes to ndtv.com, somebody else goes to ibnlive.com. If you are in cricket, then you'll go to espn.com, right? Everybody familiar with that? You don't start with search. You know which side you want to be in. The question is, that's where your user is. Your user is on ESPN.com. That's what he's doing. He's watching cricket, he's watching movies. Second, your user, like we have demonstrated earlier, is also on mobile. And he's taking action. If he's got a smartphone and if he's searching for something, he's actually doing something once he gets some information. He's possibly searching for a movie nearest so he can go and watch Naiga. And that's what he's looking for. So if you are that, and, and I think some of this is familiar, right? What time does the show, uh, show start? How, how do you book my tickets, etc. So, you know, essentially I'm saying that your user is actually on mobile, is on searching something, is actually also on a couple of his favorite websites. So what does it mean? As a business, you need to be there. This is the audience, and if you have the right ad for him, if you're in the right place, right time, you create a magic moment. You're actually very relevant to the user. You suddenly don't become irrelevant because you are there, where your consumer is there, and this is a consumer who is willing to spend. The first 120 million users that are online are willing to spend, are willing to purchase anything that you're going to offer, right from a training, to flowers, to mobiles, to laptops, to even if you want to drive him to your car showroom, he'll come there. These are the people who are currently online. So the first thing, be present when your user is searching, right? On search, if your user is looking for something, let's say somebody is searching for 3M, you want to be there. And you want him to take to exactly the page that you want him to land, depending upon the query. You might have multiple things. You might be selling laptops. You might be searching mobiles. But if the user is typing mobile, you want to actually take him to your mobile site, not to your laptop site. Second, when your user is searching on mobile, you want to be there. When your user is browsing the web in all the pages that you think are the best pages that is more relevant to you, you want to be there, right? You could be there on a particular page in NDTV if you're selling mobiles. Uh, some page called Tech and Gadgets, right? They have this gadget show, they have this page. You want to be on that page, not on NDTV homepage. Make sense? Similarly, you know, very familiar. A lot of people searching for Danush, uh, for Colaverity. I mean, that's a great place to go start and get your audience from, okay? There are phenomenal amount of age group audience. You need to be really clear whether you want to target all of them. But if you think those are your right audience, you should be there. So, who brings this both together? How do you ensure that your ad right now connects to your user when he's doing what he's doing? That's, what, that's where AdWords comes in. AdWords gives you a couple of things. One, it gives you phenomenal reach. Because as Google, we have tied up with all the partners on where your users are. All the search that it does on ESPN.com, on the Hindu.com, we are there. He's a, they are all our partners. 
If he's on Google.com, anyway, great. On YouTube, fantastic. So some, suddenly you get a massive distribution at scale. Why is that important? Think of your ad budgets. You know, you're not Hindustan Lever, you're not Procter & Gamble, you can't buy out ads, you can't buy out TV spots, you can't, you can't sponsor TV channels, right? But what you can do as a small and medium business is suddenly scale. Let's take an example of Rajendran, the video they played early in the morning. I'm sure he wouldn't buy a Sun TV ad, you know. It will cost him a phenomenal amount of money. And by the way, they might not be the audience. You really want to look, he's really looking for people who are interested in paintings. He's not looking at everybody who's looking at, you know, uh, some kind of a TV serial. Make sense? So distribution at massive scale. Second is the cost. You know, in terms of any other uh, way of actually reaching out audience, you just pay and you hope. There's a famous saying, you know, uh, I know my advertising works, but I don't know which part. Half of 50% of my advertising works, 50% doesn't, so I don't know which half, right? In this case, you can pretty much control your cost because you can determine when to pay, how much to pay, and how long you want to pay. And you can tweak it on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, right? And you can do all the tests that are relevant for you to get to the right cost. Third, you can track it. And this is possibly the only medium which gives you the ability to track and measure results at a very, very detailed level. No other company, no other advertising product comes anywhere close to the amount of detail that Google can provide you with. Anybody of you have used Google AdWords? In the, in the morning, some people have raised your hands. Anybody here has used AdWords? That's pretty good. Anybody thinks anything here that I said is MS you want to now say? Is it fine? Can you testify that what I'm saying is fine? Raise your hands. OK, thank you so much. What is the fundamental thing? And I'm just walking through, uh, my idea is to walk you through a few basics, and then we'll get into the detailed workshop in the afternoon. The fundamental thing is how do you create your account structure? If you are a small and medium business, it starts with, you know, you have a great website. A good website is very, very fundamental. Okay, a lot of people ignore it and get into a lot of issues later. As in the workshop, we'll explain a good website is the primary prerequisite because it will determine the quality of your website, it will determine the quality of user interaction. And more than anything else, Google places a premium on users. Just so you know, and don't take offense, uh, all of you might be our advertisers, but at the end of the day, we, we actually don't value our advertisers as much as our users. And I'm sorry to say that, and some of you might be offended, in most businesses, People who pay you money are the most important. In our case, no. It's our users who are very important. If you create a crappy website, you're willing to pay a lot of money, you might not want your money. Because at the end of the day, user experience is very, very critical to Google. And that's where we start with, right? So as advertisers, while you're very important, uh, if you really want to be successful, you want to make sure your users get a great experience. And that's when Google starts respecting you and making sure that you, you can drive more business to you, because then it becomes a great user experience for people who come on to google.com or on the property sites. You create an AdWords campaign, and when you're doing an AdWords campaign, think about, you know, you might have three or four businesses, you might be selling uh, training one, you might, you might have a training thing, you might do tests if you're education, or you might be selling flowers, you might be selling uh, mobiles, you might be selling laptops, you might want to break this out into different parts, and you can pretty much create separate campaigns for each of them. Make sense? That's how you'd want to do, you don't want to put one thing where you want to target a particular product in this month, you can actually do that. Start with that. Within that, you create campaigns, and at campaigns, you can set daily budgets, you can set location and language targeting. You want to target only Chennai, we have enabled city targeting, so you can target only users in Chennai. You can't ship out of Chennai, you can't ship to Coimbatore, there is no point in targeting Coimbatore, right? You're wasting a lot of money because people from Coimbatore will see your ad and click it, but you can't do anything about it but you're paying money to Google, we don't want that money. So we made sure that you have city targeting enabled, you can target by language, and you can target by region, and therefore you can control the audience to whom you want to serve. Make sense, right? Similarly, you can decide which network you want to be in. You can choose, for example, that, you know, I'm going to sell something which on mobile doesn't work. Fine, don't advertise on mobile, we'll give you that. You don't want to be on the hindu.com, you don't want to be in all the display network, fine. If it doesn't work and you have you feel that that's not what you want to start, that option is available. You need not sign on to it. So it's very flexible in terms of how you can do it. And again, within that, some products you want to be on the Hindu, some products you don't want to be on the Hindu, that's also fine. Some products you want to be on YouTube, that's also fine. So you could create your campaigns and target the right audience using the right media and mix. Right? You can even willing to pay different CPC bits, and I'll explain a little bit about CPC and greater detail in the afternoon, uh, is that on some products you have a great margin. Okay? 
If you are selling a product which has 50% margin, you might want to bid higher. You might not want to use that bid across all your products. That, that's the beauty of it, right? Accordingly, you can pay and bid for each kind of products differently. Keywords are very, very fundamental. Keywords are what people put in that Google bar or anywhere that they're searching. Those become very important. Or on the content network, uh, it targets the ad depending upon what you're trying to query. So be found with all your products. Number one, the key thing is group keywords by theme, but not like this. If you look at an ad which is for Google Store, it says buy Google gear. And you know, we, we sell all this stuff. We sell right from a beach towel to a baseball cap to a jogging top to a Google hooded jumper. And this is actually available in Google Store, right? And if you're creating an ad like this and your ad reads buy Google gear, great prices on Google merchandise, shop now, and then you have all these keywords which can trigger an ad. Now what happens, a user comes and is searching for beach towel. Okay, your ad will get triggered. That's like, you know, your entire shop or is, might or might not get triggered for the reason that there is somebody else who's only selling beachtowels.com and most likely against this ad, that ad will get triggered because the keyword is beach towel. The website is www.beachtowel.com. He's got possibly his ad leads like buy beach towels great prices today. More likely that ad will come up first than yours. It doesn't matter. Just because you have a keyword, not necessarily your ad, will, your ad will come up. So theming becomes very important. You could do this, for example. You can say Google accessories, Google office equipment, Google wearables. Now you have created three different parts. In accessories, you have put something like beach towel, Google towel, stuff like that. In office equipment, you have put USB stick. So now you have a little bit more uh, theming. You know That looks a little bit better. But what you want to really do is this. What I told you earlier, Google beach towel. When somebody is searching therefore, likelihood of that coming up is far higher. Everybody agrees? This is, a, this is the right way to campaign. This is how you would want to target as, as, uh, as advertisers, right? You really want only that guy. You don't want any and everybody. Is this, does it make sense? And Google gives you this flexibility to create your own ads and theme your own keywords. Yeah. Just back. The mic is back. You've shown an example of a product. Could you actually show an example of a service being sold uh, through AdWords? Uh, like I, executive coaching or something like that? Oh yeah, actually training, I, I don't have it right now. All right. But uh, what typically happens is that we have a lot of people in uh -huh. our market who are primarily in executive coaching or training. Yeah. Uh, you know, computer courses, uh, executive coaching, for example. Uh, we have this new um, HR interventions, stuff like that. So if you specifically call that out, People do that. They drive traffic to their website. Okay. And there are actually advertisers who do that because that's, that, that will give them scale and brand them better. Okay. But the short answer is, the answer is yes, I don't have it here because it's a uh, pre-planned presentation, but I'm happy, happy to uh, give you more examples. Thank you. You can even actually, to just check your hypothesis, just go to google.com, think of the keywords that your business is in and type. Okay. You might be surprised there'll be people who are advertising for it already. Okay. That's the best place to know who is advertising. Think of your competition. Okay. Type it and see in your google.com. You might get sometimes his own ad as well. Okay. Because then that's how he's catering. So you'll know something about it. You can all do that. Think of your competition, the big player that you want to compete. Think about how he wants to get his you uh, consumers. And then you'll type it in google.com. You'll know whether he's advertising or not. I mean, it'll come up. If he's there, if he's bidding the right, he'll come up. Okay. So you. that's a good place to start. Thank you. Second thing, you know, as an advertiser and as a consumer, more importantly, all of you are consumers, or buy something or other always. I am. I keep buying stuff when I, whenever I can, right? So you are consumers, right? You are at different stages of purchase cycle, right? At some point of time, you are thinking about buying something, right? You are thinking about buying a car. You might not still buy a car. You are still talking to your wife. You are talking to your kids. What car, what color? You are talking to your friends. What's the mileage of this car? What's the car that you bought last time? How is the mileage? Firm by name, because they don't know. But you want to be there when the user is thinking. What would you do? You really want to be in his consideration set, right? So he's got thinking something like hottest phone. I mean, this is an example of phone. Let's, let me stick to phone instead of uh, going off. So people are searching for hottest phones, new mobile phones, celebrity mobile phones, whatever. Now, if you are a mobile phone retailer, you want people to come and pick up stuff from you. You want to be even there, or you don't want to be there, depending upon what's your brand value already in the market, right? 
For example, which is the favorite store that all of you go and buy from a mobile phone? Anybody wants to talk about a good branded mobile chain in Chennai? I don't know, so I'm asking you. Universal? Yeah, great example. Universal, right? So Universal is known. You know, I don't want to actually get a guy who's only thinking about it. I want, because most people in Chennai will at least come to maybe Universal to check out the price because everybody knows he might give a better deal than anybody else, right? I'm Universal. I don't want to be there when the guy is dreaming. But when the guy is in the purchase decision or in the planning cycle, I want to be in his consideration set. So when actually somebody is typing mobile phone comparisons, iPhone features or iPhone cost, best price, I want to be there. Right? So you can decide at what stage of the purchase cycle you want to target. Second, when you're actually planning, buy iPhone, nearest place from whatever, Tinagar. I want to buy this. So then you want to be there. Then that's when you can actually target your ad because you know that your shop is in Tinagar. People from Manapakam are not going to come and buy mobile from Tinagar. Hopefully not, some, some do. But you want to really limit your uh, audience to Tinagar. So, you could decide your keywords based on your goals, whether you want to get people at what stage of the purchase cycle they are in, and then target the right kind of ads. Okay, matching ads and keywords improves your performance. Now, what are we saying here? We are saying that if you're trying to say something like, you know, kids coaching classes, and if your ad reads like school holiday activities, this doesn't matter because you're saying find lots of fun classes for all ages, including crafts, arts, and more. The actual query, query is kids' uh, cooking classes. This, this two doesn't match, so the, it's a poor quality score. If you're looking specifically for cooking classes, but not meant for kids, and that's Thai Italian meals, that's not what you're trying to target because you don't want your ad to show. So as an advertiser, you need to be really careful how you want to take your query to what your users are searching for. And the best thing is actually to figure out the right audience and you actually have the right ad for them. And that's where the magic happens. Creating compelling ad text is very important. So think about the ad text that you're doing. Call to action is very important. If you're wanting to have a special offer, call it out. You can actually have various things in terms of prizes, dynamic keyword insertion, stuff like that when you get in. So those becomes very, very important. Choose the relevant landing page. If the keyword is umbrella, then what you should do is, if you have many pages, let's say you sell umbrellas, beach towels, stores, a particular kind of service on executive coaching, and the guy is searching for that particular iPhone mobile, you might want to take him to the iPhone page, not to the Samsung page. If you do that, then it's a user disconnect, right? The guy is searching for iPhone, you're taking him to a Samsung page within your own products because you sell all, you want to take him to the right page directly, then the interaction becomes far more easier. So these are things that you would really want to be careful about. This is how the AdWords interface looks like. I don't want to dwell into it in the interest of time. Uh, but this will give you everything from what's your CPC, what's your cost, what's, what has been your click-through rate, and uh, what's the total money that you have spent, and what are the keywords which are working well, what are the keywords which are not working well. It's really, and the lot more, I mean, it will take entire day, couple of days to actually walk you through that. Uh, so uh, let me skip this. This is CPC, how, what, what is a CPC, what's a CTR. What I'll do is that in the interest of time, I'll just uh, move through that. How many of you know CPC? Okay, fairly well. CPC is cost per click. It is what you pay per click when the actual ad is clicked. Just so you know, advertisers don't pay when an ad shows up. Advertisers pay when a user goes and clicks on the ad. So it's okay for your ad to show and nobody clicks on it. You don't pay Google. You'll start paying Google only when a user clicks on it. So that is called cost per click. At that point of time, you'll, you'll start getting charged. Similarly, CTR is how many impressions have happened and how many people have actually clicked on it. So that becomes your click-through rate. Uh, uh, I think uh, I can take questions on this later, but uh, I've been asked to help you have your lunch as quickly as possible, so I'll not stand. The most important thing, if you are an advertiser, if you're going to advertise with Google, is that we, we place a premium on quality. So that's a function of how many people are able to click through your ads, which means that more, many, more and more users are searching for it. We want to incentivize that. We believe that those advertisers are good. We also believe that your, your ad should be relevant to keywords. I mean, one of the most simple things for you to do is that we all know Katrina Kai for, you know, Danush get a lot of uh, traffic. So if you're selling mobiles, you can always put Danush, right? And people searching for Danush can come to your store. But essentially, what you have done in the process is you have created a user experience which is not so great. So don't expect a great quality score or don't, Google recognizes that, right? Google doesn't want 
users to users who are searching for Danush are looking for Danush. They're not looking for your mobile phone. So for God's sake, don't try to put stuff that is not relevant to your product. I'm just taking an extreme example uh, to convey the message. Landing page quality, I talked about it. So the higher your quality score, the lower you play. And that's very important. Why? We incentivize people to create the right content, the right user in the right user uh, experience and we want to actually uh, it's not about taking more money it's about charging it for the right so you create so we want to reward people disproportionately for a great user experience to recap just just to conclude we said where are your users your users are online second which is a network which can get both of them together google is google is a great great platform the third we said is that adwords enables you to do all of this why because you can get tremendous reach you can control your costs you can track your roi and more importantly, you get, you, you should be present where your users are and users are online. So I leave you with that. Uh, there is a, uh, hopefully it will go live. I want to pay you a customer testimonial. We are based in Delhi. In September, we were getting about 100 visitors a day to our site. Today we get about 20,000. Our success has been due to our online marketing strategy. And online marketing means Google AdWords. Making the customer aware was, was a big challenge. So what we really needed was a, a kind of campaign which was highly measurable from day one. I remember, you know, it's just you logged onto the website, you looked for Google AdWords, you logged on, you got, uh, you set up your campaign. AdWords doesn't even take an hour. Like, I could set up an AdWords campaign right now in about uh, five minutes. I think we started our campaign with 2,000 rupees a day, which was a you know, ridiculously small amount uh, when you're dealing with a you know fantastic organization we had at the back end, which was Google. Google really helped us because you know one month into the campaign when we wanted to expand, we didn't know which keywords to expand on. Now, Google of course knew which keywords were getting impressions and they gave us that data. When we started we were doing 1000 keywords, now we're probably acting on a million keywords. On every one of those million words, you can start, stop, tweak, anytime. You can customize your campaign every hour, you can customize it every day. Which other mechanism can you do this on? AdWords. See, I'll, I'll give you this example from uh, Mahabharata. When somebody asks Krishna, when do you appear, you know, and Krishna says, whenever you remember me, I'll appear. Whenever you're thinking of car insurance, you want to go to Google, you want to type in car insurance, and policy will be there. I'm in a way, you know, acting a bit like Krishna, if you want. <laughs> Getting the two people, one who benefits from the sale, and one who benefits from the purchase, both together, with, with no intermediation at all. AdWords. Till today, we have not run a single print campaign, we have not run a single television campaign, we haven't done any of that. And we are the most visited insurance website in the country. So for us, being on Google AdWords really makes sense. We are you know, a phenomenal fan of uh, Google AdWords and we don't have anybody in our marketing except an AdWords team and you know an online marketing team. We don't have an offline marketing team. So Policy Bazaar has grown uh, 30 times since October and about 3000% we're the most visited insurance website in the country, uh, recognized by all the insurance players. So we've beaten all the sort of heavyweights, so to say, with probably, you know, maybe a very, very small fraction of their marketing budgets. And uh, they're all looking at us to figure out how we did this. AdWords is the best friend a marketer can have. You can measure your ROIs, you can monitor your campaign, you can optimize your campaign, and you can do it at whatever pace you want to. So you're totally in control. It really is that simple. Thank you. So again, uh, that, that's a classic example of uh, how, a, how a company from nowhere, as far as selling insurance is concerned, is suddenly one of the largest. And he didn't spend a single dollar on print, didn't buy TV spots, he used online digital. It makes sense, right? Most people who buy cars, think for example, would, would be able to afford a laptop, hopefully, or a mobile with an internet connection, and hopefully we'll get online to search. If you, are in, if, if you are in that business, you would want to target to them first instead of actually looking after the entire 1.2 billion and showing your TV ad. So it gives you a level playing field suddenly of phenomenal reach and, 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 and the system tells you what keywords are being searched. It's a level playing field, everybody can search. The Google trends that I said today morning, 
you can go and search. You can go and find out what's happening in your city, what is searching for whom. Today morning, as of now, the largest searches happened for uh, uh, Rajesh Khanna, right? It's there and, and all of us know why. And then the second largest search happens for Dimple Kapadia, which is interesting. But I'm saying this is not information that I know, this is information that you can know. Similarly, the keywords that are relevant to your business are available to you on your AdWords page. You can go add keywords, you can take out keywords, you can do whatever you want. Essentially, it will give you scale. If you, you, you can reach the entire country or you can reach only Chennai, depending upon where you want to sell. And that's the flexibility that gives you. So I'll sign off on that. So hopefully, for those people who are using AdWords, you continue to do it. For those who are not, this is a great opportunity for you to get on. And I would definitely recommend all of you to go into the afternoon session on AdWords uh, workshop where we'll teach more about keywords, landing page, bids, budgets, CPCs, etc. So I'll take a few questions and then we can head out for lunch. Any questions? Yeah. We request you to get on the mic. The mic's next to you. Sorry, just a quick one. Uh, I'm just trying, please feel free to let me know yeah. if I need to raise this in the next session. Yeah. I'm just trying sure. to understand about remarketing and a uh, little bit more about conversions. Remarketing, there is actually an entire session in the, in, in the, in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, you could cover that. Conversions, is there anything particular in conversions you want to know? You have not covered anything about that, but I guess... The, yeah, uh, it will get covered. So, con conversions in terms of uh, how you can track conversions, etc., oh, that will get covered in the afternoon. Thanks. It's far more detailed, take some time. So, I didn't want to bore everyone with a lot of technicalities. Sure. So, sorry for that. But Thank you. But you'll get it in the afternoon session. Yeah. Hey, this is Arun. Uh, yeah. So what is your answer to ad block plus which uh, you know bans advertisements on uh, uh, firefox and uh, also chrome browsers i have i am fine with it it's a user right user doesn't want to see ads he doesn't see ads so we, we have no complaint but, at uh, all with that see you should be customer centric right uh, being a, a, a google product uh, chrome should uh, show uh, advertisements also no right no no. See, why do you accept uh, Google extension ad block plus then? The because reason why we do it is because a user is going and picking that particular features and is blocking an ad. He's central to my business. Advertiser pays me. I'm fine. I don't mind showing ads. But if a user doesn't want to see ads, I'll not show him that ad. That's the end. So we don't want to monetize. So think of it like this, you know. You show an ad, the user is not really interested. What's the fun of showing him an ad? Because he's not going to click on it. It's going to be very irritating. Your ad is going to show. He's going to have a bad experience with you and definitely with Google because he, he, you're not controlling that. We don't give him the ability to control it. So it's a lose-lose for everybody. If a user wins, advertiser wins, Google wins. So in uh, the end, it is fine. That's right. But uh, you know, uh, when uh, I target uh, high-end people who yeah. are very tech savvy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they will uh, usually block ads. I yeah. do that. Yeah. I personally do that. But uh, I enable that uh, you know, in some websites. Yeah. Uh, I enable that, uh, so ads will be showing up in certain pages, mm -hmm. right? Just to get to know what is happening around. Yeah. That is what I do. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, tech savvy people will block such ads, right? Being a, a Google product, Google is uh, uh, doesn't have multiple entities, uh, right? Uh, it is Google Chrome and AdWords are of uh, same. Same. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like uh, my tar if my targeted audience are from. Uh, High-end people, uh, I won't reach there. Yeah, because the high-end people don't want to be reached. And as a user, that trumps everything else. So you could pay me any amount of money, but uh, why would I actually go and irritate a high net worth individual? Uh, at least I'm saying that there are various other media still you can target, but I get what you're saying. You know, AdWords is your advertiser facing thing. We are paying you money. You should show the ad because I want him to be shown. Whereas you have another product called Google Chrome, which actually enables the user to stop seeing my ads. And that's perfectly fine if you look at it from a very, even from your point of view, it doesn't make sense uh, to target a user when he's not looking for that information. Maybe he doesn't want because he already bought that stuff. Or he's tech savvy, so he's going to go figure out. On the day that he wants, he'll go search and he'll properly do a research. And when he's searching, he'll enable ads to show when he really wants that information, right? Which is fine. So if you're there at that point of time, if you are advertising with Google, you'll show at that point of time. So the idea is not to actually spam people. The idea is to actually provide and to provide, as Google's mission says, the right information, organize the world's information, and make it easy for the users. And that's where the entire thing is. So. 
oleh ya ya uh, do you have comparative statistics available between effectiveness of email campaign video campaign and adwords in terms of effectiveness you you can actually depends upon the industry that you are in depends upon the vertical that you are in and depends upon uh, what you are trying to do uh -huh. you can generate those statistics by just doing a little bit of abc testing so you put some 1000 rupees in this 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees depending upon what what's on your mind you test it you will get relevant ctr sometimes you actually can look at that information once you start the campaign why is that important is that if you run, at least if you are a new advertiser my suggestion is for you to run at least a month or a two because you will gain enough by that time both in terms of user behavior click through rate your own changes in keywords to understand it so if you are willing to put a little amount of money you can generate that information for your business because uh, what i can do the google analytics is it google analytics google adwords itself will tell you for It'll example saying that you what's your click through rate on a video versus your click through rate if you are advertising in the hindu.com on that page on careers page let us say you want to be on on that page what has been the click through rate okay. to actually on google.com main page what has been your click through rate and two you can actually link it to conversions like one of our friends just asked me okay. how many of them eventually converted if there is a way you can track it by putting various uh, analytics etc you can actually track through and you will know for example very interesting is that some products and people and again it varies by product by industry by market uh, people go and look for information on search those convert faster all right okay for for some industries for some particular kind of industries okay. and again it's not true for everyone whereas you get a humongous amount of traffic from the display network which is all the websites in the world because a lot of users are on the websites but their conversion ratio will be low but the actual cost of that conversion could be much lower than the search conversion okay so you need to play around a little bit on what's your number of users converting or coming from search and the cost of that conversion versus the cost of a display conversion as in what is the number of users coming on display which could be in millions uh, the cost that you're paying would be a fraction okay. right because auction operates differently in search and in display and as well as mobile mobile is much cheaper so the interesting thing on mobile is that a lot of users are coming but people are not advertising on mobile so it's a good place to be in if you are if you want to be in the auction because it's not as such got heaten up to a point where you know the cpc becomes a little bit more uh, costly than on search so very specifically to your question you actually get to do each of these three what you need to do is create a campaign do an exclusive search do an exclusive uh, display do one youtube do one mobile and you can keep these four separate and you can test Thank over you. time run it and then stop whatever is not working okay. and Thank each you. of them can be optimized we can help you optimize them because the how people search on mobile are different from how people search on youtube so you need to really tweak it and in, in the account you will get enough suggestions to do the right thing but if you want help you can always reach out thank you very much thank you now using your uh, adwords basically uh, to uh, run different ad campaigns how is it possible to split my uh, account budget uh, you know equally to different ad campaigns on the same account yeah. i've been trying to do it with I was not able to kind of figure it out. You'll have to, your budgets are at campaign level. I think, uh, yeah, you can actually do that. So why don't you connect offline or just uh, maybe catch up in the afternoon with me or with my colleagues. We'll actually exa exactly understand what the problem is and we can define. But the short answer is yes. Okay. It's a very simple thing. I mean, think of it, right? If you want to put your money, that's how you want to put your money. On a particular product, you want to invest only so much, that's your budget, that you won't spend more than that. So it's already inbuilt into the uh, product. Uh, like uh, I'm an individual, I just uh, wanted to initiate my business. Then in that time, I'm uh, working out, uh, getting that, creating an uh, AdWord account, and I started to work with that. As an individual, I am doing it. The taste, the same thing. The co my competitor also uh, do the same. And uh, how I get the uniqueness and the support from Google as uh, uh, how I uh, get my business run uh, uh, as compared to competitor. Okay, so your answer is a uh, lot of people are, uh, everybody yeah, can open yeah, AdWords, right? You are selling mobile, X is selling yeah. mobile, all of you most likely the keywords are same. Uh, we don't distinguish between people uh, who can ask for support. So you ask for support, he asks for support. Depending upon what he's targeting, we'll give him support. Depending upon what you're asking, we'll give you support. Everybody gets support because the lines are open, number one. It is not a function of the amount of money you spend with us at all. Uh, we are assuming that depending upon how you treat your users, because getting users is only one part of the equation. 
actual user buying from you is a large part of equation which is within your shop, within your control, and then keeping them is also a large part of your loyalty control, your service, and multiple things go into it. So I can't claim credit to the later. Bringing the X number of users is a function of your budget, your keywords, the quality of your web page, the quality of your ads, and all that. So you can actually keep tweaking your uh, costs as well as your quality in a way that you could be better off. You could show the first ad, could be yours, and that's completely in your control. We'll give you all the tools. We'll give him also all the tools because they're available in the system. It's up to each person to then go and use it to the best possible way. If both of you consult with us, we'll give you all the information possible. Some people make the changes. Some people actually don't make. They leave it like that for a month. And then suddenly somebody else is overtaken them. So yeah, like, short uh, answer is there is no single advantage. Uh, we will we, we'll not promise that because it's unfair. We don't do that. Keywords are similar, that mean. Right? Yeah, keywords are similar, right. It's users who are searching. So uh, keywords are what? Keywords are what your users are searching for your business. What, what are the keywords that typically your users search? Like uh, the relevant thing they were uh, hmm? promptly they will ask for uh, something. If, if they keep in mind, they start to ask for uh, uh, something as like, uh, if it is a simple word, they probably uh, tend to search in that. Yeah. Uh, if example, I'm trying to uh, ask, ask him, Mm -hmm. Training. I mm -hmm. just start to uh, work for training. Yeah. In that training, uh, there is a so, uh, so many things were in uh, AdWords. Like uh, if some part uh, based out of location, as well as based out of uh, like uh, uh, budget constraint, as well as for uh, something relevant to uh, relevant studies and something relevant to practical, something Correct. online, yeah. something uh, as like uh, something it goes. Yeah. But uh, if I am focusing into all the ways and I am getting all the keywords and I am going to put it at my particular website, something, some my business and the same thing my competitor is yeah. going to provide and he is also uh, doing the best in his part. So uh, the uniqueness is same as compared to me. So how can I differ from him like uh, to sh uh, show something uh, extra from that? What we have noticed is that, you know, by that logic, then no typical competition should be using Google AdWords. Uh, but the fact that we have seen is that uh, when actually people apply, they apply different ways. The ad is a little bit more creative in one case. In one case, the ad is calling out the USP saying, I've got a 20% discount. If you're in training, you will say, I want to do only C, C++ training. You can say that I want this month to target C, C++ only uh, for, to train. Uh, because I have got a trainer and is idle and I'm paying him salary. So I want I want people to come and take that course. So I'm willing to bid higher for this month because I've got a sunk cost. Next month, once you've got your batch done, you might not be willing to pay so high, so you wind down your cost of acquisition. Your competition could still be doing it because he's got different fixed cost and running cost setup. So the short answer to that is you can keep tweaking it, but you have seen people get creative on ads, create get creative on... Um, for example, uh, the number of leads that they want. I, very fundamentally, we reached out to one customer who was spending a lot of money on AdWords and he said, why did you stop spending? He says that I've got so many leads that all my people are busy chasing all the leads that you have given me. So first let us finish that because he's getting calls, he's not able to take calls. He's, pissing, he's basically turning off customers. So he said, let me turn off my AdWords campaign, right? And, and, and he did something He did something different. He targeted very specific. He did a whole lot of things right. And he got it right after, after a few times. Just so all of you know, and let me set expectations, AdWords looks easy, but it takes some time to get to there. So it's not easy. That, that easy. It's not that simple as I made it out to be. So you really need it to be at it. So let, let me put that disclaimer. It's hard work because acquiring customers is a little bit of hard work. Um, so I'm saying, so for every particular thing, it's a phase of business that you are in versus a phase of business that is in versus the, you, versus the cost that is incurring versus the cost that you're incurring. A lot of this will determine how you bid, which region you want to target, which course in that particular month and particular week that you want to do. So you could get very creative if you want, if you know what you want, okay? okay. And if that guy knows what you want. Then uh, if the support which is provided by Google, like for the AdWords, mm -hmm. the uh, support which I am getting from Google, like uh, the same support is going to get by yeah. my competitor. Yeah. Then uh, how it differs, like uh, he is also getting, uh, getting the same thing which I am getting. Yeah. Then how come by paying uh, some... So let us say extra? somebody comes to your training institute, two students come, both of them pay the same money. Will you teach one person less than the other person? You wouldn't, right? <laughs> the yeah. answer is there. But uh, you, I, I, if I can dis if, just imagine if I was a business, I start doing it saying that I'll favor you versus her and versus him tomorrow because you're going to pay me. Will you ever work with me? Right? It, 
Just as simple as that. Because you wouldn't do your, you wouldn't treat your own users like that. It's simple. So it's your IP, it's your intellectual capital, it's your own creativity that will get you the right users at the right cost and do your own business. We give everybody the same tools. Is, see, everybody goes to the same class. Okay? Some people get good marks, some people don't. It's the same answer that I can tell you. You got a competition, 60 of them, you might be the trumps or you might be in the middle or you might be in the bottom, but everybody has the same tools to learn from and everybody gets the same support. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you, I'll close this and uh, thank you so much for your time. I hope this has been a useful uh, part of your day. Thank you. <laughs>